Extensions are miniature apps in their own right, and as such need their own space in your code. That doesn't mean you can't share code and resources between your extensions and your app, just that it's not automatic. To get started with a fresh extension, go to the File menu, then choose New, and this time go to Target. When you're asked to choose a template, look for iOS, then Application Extension, and then select Action Extension, and press Next. We're going to call this thing Extension, nice and easy. Uh, make sure the action type is selected as Presents User Interface, then click Finish. Now when you first create an extension inside an app, Xcode will ask you whether you want to activate its scheme. Please check the Do Not Show This Message Again box, then click Activate. And with this change, you'll see it now activates Extension up here, rather than our regular app. So it's got a different target instead, we're using the extension rather than the app. Once your extension has been created, it's going to appear in your project navigator on the left here below your main project. So here's our main project folder and here's the extension group as well as the main app group. Inside there you can see we have action view control.swift plus a new storyboard just for the extension. As you can see inside our action view controller, there is actually quite a lot of code here already. Uh, it's not great. Uh, I'm afraid the code's quite messy and quite hard. Uh, I'm even more afraid of the fact the code's almost all new and most of it's required. Uh, so we're going to try and work through it really slowly so you can understand what's going on. Now it's complicated because it needs to be. Your extension doesn't talk to Safari and Safari doesn't talk to your extension because that opens up security risks. Instead, iOS acts as an intermediary between Safari and the extension, passing data safely between the two. Now to help make all this code inside view to load easier to understand, I want you to delete it. Just go ahead and select everything below super.viewToDeload, all this code here, and get rid of all of it, leaving just the call to super.viewToDeload. Instead, we're going to write some new code in its place. I'll get this bar on the right to make more space, and then say if let input item is extension context question mark dot input items dot first conditional typecast as ns extension item. If that succeeds, then if let item provider is input item dot attachments question mark dot first. If that succeeds, we'll say item provider dot load item for type identifier k u t type property list as string. Then we'll end the method and write an open brace to do a closure. Inside there, we're going to do some work. So that's lots of code already. I want to break it down line by line so you can really see what's happening here before we move on, because there is lots of code here and it is all new. Now, when our extension item is created, we get an extension context. That's this value being used here. This lets us control how it interacts with the parent app. In the case of this input items property, this will be an array of data the parent app sending to our extension to use. We only care about the first item this project, so we'll use dot first inside there. And even then, it might not exist. So we have conditional typecast to make sure it is indeed an NS extension item, using if let to unwrap it safely. Our input item contains an array of attachments. That's this array being used here. And it's given to us wrapped up as an NS item provider. Our code will pull out the first attachment from the first input item. So we're basically saying, give us the very, very first thing that was shared with us. The next line calls a load item for type identifier method, which asks the item provider to actually provide us with its item. But you'll notice it has a closure here, so this code executes asynchronously. That is, this method will carry on executing while the item provider is busy loading and sending us its data, so the main app, Safari, doesn't freeze up. Now you can see there's an error here in my code because this is going to provide us the data that was decoded. It's gone through the whole barrier from iOS and Safari to come to us, and here's the actual loaded data to work with. So we've got to have inside there a closure that accepts two parameters. So 
So inside this closure, I'll say weak self, and we accept a dictionary and an error in, like that. So the weak self, of course, is there because we're going to use self inside the closure to say store this property away somewhere, but we don't want to have a strong reference cycle in there, so we'll use weak self just to make sure. But this dictionary, that contains the important stuff. That'll tell us what actually was provided to us by iOS. So this code takes a number of shortcuts that Apple's own code does not, which is why it's significantly shorter. Once you've gotten to grips with this basic extension, I recommend you go back and look at Apple's template code to see how it loops through all the items and providers that find the first image it can. Now, despite all this work, you can't see results just yet. We need to do some configuration work first, because Apple's default action extension is configured for images, not for web page content.